In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you a simple technique to bring titles on the screen mimicking the horizontal motion that you often see in a PowerPoint style presentation. We're going to show you a short example of that and then we'll show you how to build this yourself. The first thing we're going to do is go to our title room. I can click on the T on the left side or press the F7 key. I'm going to take the My Title and drag it down. In this case, I'll put it in track number three. I already have a timeline marker and I'll set it next to that. Now I need to extend the duration. I'm going to make it match the duration of the title above, which happens to be the same if I move up here as my video. Now my audio track is longer and we'll deal with that issue at the end of this tutorial. So what I want to do is either press the F2 key with track number three highlighted or double click that will get me into my title designer. You notice I've turned my grids on in this case and if yours aren't on if you want to use them you simply click below the preview screen you have an option that says grid lines and you can choose up to 10 by 10 for your grids. Now I'm going to change the font family and the font size of the title. I'll double click and we'll make the first one say scheduling. And now I'm going to change the font family. A reminder that any font that's available in Windows is available to you in PowerDirector. I'm going to choose one called in my set of font families Earthbound and when it comes to choosing the size of the font some assume that you must pick between the drop downs. The truth is you can click in the box with the number, drag across the numbers and type in any number you like. I'm going to take a 32 and make my font size 32. So on this title I'm going to take and drag it and position it in this place in the grid line. Now I have my first title. What I'd like to do is take a second title so I can simply double click on top of the preview screen. It will inherit all the font features of the previous title and I will type payroll. Now I'm going to take this and position it and lock it in at this location. Now we'll do a third one and in this case we're going to use logistics. And again we'll position that, lock it into our grid. Now I have the three titles. What I'd like to do next is have them move in so I'm going to click on the effect tab in the upper left and we're going to work only with starting effects. Now the third title is highlighted right now so what I'm going to do is drag down and I'm going to take the slide, I'm going to do slide left. As I hover over this third title, in the darker blue part, it tells me that that is the applied starting effect. I'm going to click on Payroll, choose the same slide left, and you see it's mimicked on the screen, and then Scheduling, and I'll do the same. Now one thing I want to do is I want them to come in sequentially. So what I'm going to do is control the duration of the starting effect by holding my mouse and dragging this to the left or to the right. The, f the shorter the segment, the faster it comes in. Let's say we want to do it in about a second and a half. I'm going to use one second, 15 frames in this particular case. So scheduling comes in. Payroll, I want to make it the same duration. Logistics, the same. But I don't want them all to come in at the same time. So what I need to do is take the payroll and make that drag it to the right and that will move it to follow the scheduling. I'll take the logistics and move it to the right and make that follow the payroll. The only problem we have is when we shrink these it changes the proportions. So this duration here may not be a second and a half. It actually may be shorter 
because the entire title now is, sh is shorter. So I have to look at where the title starts. Right now it starts at 2 seconds and 21 frames. I've already lost some frames on the payroll. Let's move up to that one. That one starts at 115. I want it to go 3. So I'll drag it for 3 seconds. I'll have to take the third one, readjust that, and move this in. It starts roughly at 3 seconds. I won't worry about a frame. It should go to about 4.15. And so now we have the titles coming in sequentially. If I play this, scheduling, payroll, and logistics. Let me show you something else you can do that makes it look even cooler. We're going to take this and we're going to take each of these and have them disappear and be replaced by something else. So I want my scheduling, let's say we'll pick this place in time about five and a half seconds in and then I want my scheduling to disappear. So I'm going to shrink it from the right to about 515. But notice again I have to readjust the left side because it's proportional. So now my scheduling will go away. Now I want to add yet another one. I simply click again and we're going to take another option. We'll call it Cloud Services. And I want my Cloud Services to begin when scheduling ends. But you notice what happens. Let's move it on top so it replaces scheduling. It's in the same location. But they're on top of each other even though scheduling doesn't technically exist here. That's an anomaly I found in the program. So what I'm going to do is temporarily disable that track and now I can see my cloud services. So my cloud services will come in. I need to highlight it, make sure it's slide left, and then I'm going to turn back on my scheduling. Now they looks like they're on top of one another. Let's see what happens when we actually play this. Let's play it in the main screen. Scheduling, payroll, logistics, scheduling disappears, replaced by cloud services. Let's go back to our title room again. And I want the payroll to re be replaced by intranet tools. So I'm going to end payroll right when cloud services is in. Again, I have to adjust the effect, the starting effect, length, back again. And we're going to click on, I'm going to disable the payroll for now. Click again. Put on intranet tools. We'll move it to the place where payroll was. And we'll do the effect on this one as well. Go back to starting effect. We want the slide left. Okay, we're going to position the timing of it on track number five, title track number five. We want the length of it, the duration, to be approximately the same. I'm going to eyeball this one for now. And then we need to make sure we, we reactivate track number two. I'll click on OK. You can repeat this endlessly with all of your tracks. They can rotate as many times as you prefer. But let's play this for this segment. Now we have number one, number two, number three. Number one disappears, replaced by the second, and so on and so forth. The other thing I promised I'd talk about when we get to the end is that my music is longer than my video. What I'd like to do then is we'll stop this, go to the video track, press the end key to go to the last frame, and what I'd like to do here is I, I'm going to do Control P to take a snapshot of that frame, and we'll save it. If I go back to my media room, I'll notice that I now have a snapshot of that last frame. I'm going to take and put it up against the first one and then I'll lengthen that to the length of my audio track. Let's move this up here so you can see better. 
And so now the action will freeze on that last frame. And then in the example I showed you earlier, we also added a phone number after it was frozen. But it's a very easy way not to worry about how, how is my action going. It simply freezes at that point like we designed it to. And then we lock it in and we were going to put a phone number in this area of the screen. So I'm going to show you that example one more time and you can see what it looks like.